questions. I was just wondering if it's possible for somebody to please help. What translation of the Quran do you have again? Uh, the Halali and Khan translation. Halali and Khan. Halali and Khan. Okay, okay. I'm not too familiar with that translation, but let's see what the questions are, then hopefully we can give an answer. Yes. Um, well, one one verse would be chapter seven, verse forty. Uh, sorry, chapter five, verse forty-seven. Let the people of the Injil gospel judge by what Allah has revealed therein. And whosoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, then such people are the fasakin, the rebellious to 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 Allah. Um, it says, let the people of the Injil gospel judge by what Allah has revealed therein. So. Would Allah be telling Christians there to judge by the gospel? I mean, this is the way it appears to me. Uh, just give me the reference once again. Give me the... Yes. Um, it was chapter 5, did you say? Yes, chapter 5, verse 47. Let the people of the Injil gospel judge by what Allah has revealed therein. Seems to imply that Christians are to judge by the gospel. In verse 43... Muhammad's on his judgment cushion. He tells the Jews to judge by the Torah. And then, of course, Muslims have the Quran, verse 48, there to judge by the Quran. Wouldn't this verse be saying that the gospel was existing in the 7th century Arabia and Christians are to judge by it? Yes, yeah, so um, uh, the, uh, the gospel would have been revealed by then. What is your question? Uh, I'm sorry if I can just re-ask your question uh, regarding the verse. Well, it seems to imply that two things about the gospel. It was existing in the 7th century and it had not been changed oh. or corrupted. Possibly. Pardon? Yes, that's possible. Well, I, I think that's what the Quran doesn't say is possible. I think the Quran states that. It states that Christians are to judge by the gospel. You can't judge by a corrupted book. Why would Allah be pointing people to a corrupted book? Obviously, the, according to the Quran, the gospel was existing in the 7th century Arabia, and it had not been corrupted, surely. Well, at that time, perhaps not. Right, so you say at that time, perhaps not. Do you believe it was corrupted, and if so, when and where and by whom? I think thereafter, perhaps, yes. I mean, look, this isn't something that's uh, that's my professional field, but that is something that we, that we need to compare the verses that we believe are corrupted, and then we can see when they were corrupted. Right. But we do believe the, the Qur'an's stance on the Bible, the Gospel, is that it is a revelation of God and it's something that's part of our core belief, that we believe it's a revelation from God. Yeah. What parts now have been corrupted or have been changed or altered throughout time, that's a study within itself. Right, well that's what I'm asking you about. If You, you see, the people who gave me this Quran told me the Bible has been corrupted and it, it doesn't say that in the Quran at all. It assumes that the Bible was existing in the 7th century Arabia and it had not been corrupted at the time of Muhammad. So if you believe the Bible has been corrupted, when was it corrupted, who corrupted it, how was it corrupted, what's been corrupted, when was it corrupted and why and where and by whom? Well, this is it. Like, that's, uh, that's a pretty lengthy question because like, to get into the details, um, it will be pretty broad. Uh, but for the moment, um, well, you, you know, made like the I statement. Said, you you made the statement. You said the Bible was corrupted, and then I thought I thought you applied a few minutes ago. It was corrupted after the time of the Quran. So if you've made a statement, it's perfectly reasonable for me to say, okay, you've made that statement. Prove it. Discussion. Well, I, I was given a copy of this Quran, Halali and Khan. I, I'm, I'm looking at it. The people who gave it to me said to me, the Bible, you can't trust it, it's been corrupted. 
I've been looking at the Quran for over six months. I can't see any verse in the Quran which says the Bible has been corrupted. So the statement that the Bible has been corrupted, which which you made a little while ago, um, and which the people who gave me this Quran made, is either un-Islamic, it goes against the Quran, or if it's true, the Quran, the the Bible, the Gospel was corrupted after the Quran. In which case, I'm saying, show me proof, show me evidence for that. I'm I'm all ears. I'm going to have to get back to you on that one. I'm going to have mm-hmm. to look back. There are verses of the Quran that suggest how things have been changed, but I'm going to have to reference you back with that one. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Yes, I have, I have no problem about that at all. I can speak most days except for Mondays. Okay. Was there any other questions that you have before I give you a call back in the next few days or so? Yes, yes. Um, one would be the different versions of the Arabic Quran. The Arabic Qurans around the world, they don't all read the same. I know that Hafs has been the one promoted for a century by various Islamic authorities and, and Islamic governments. But, I mean, Surah, yeah. Surah 1016... Um, now I'm looking at the Arabic in the Hafs and the Kunbul. Uh, I don't speak Arabic, but I'm looking at the translation of each underneath. At Surah 10:16, the Hafs says he would not have made it known to you. The Kunbul says he would have made it known to you. So they say the polar opposite, and they're both the Quran and Arabic. There's there's about there's over 30 different versions of the Arabic Quran. Over 30 different versions of the Arabic text, which, which differ, you see, and I don't quite understand that. So in regards to the Arabic, the pronunciation, there are different dialects, and there's 10 actually, there's not 30. No, no, uh, no, 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 there was, there was seven Karats. The seven Karats became the 10 Karats. Then right. there was dispute because they were all different. So they said, let's take the best two students from each of the ten schools and we'll add them. So you have three renderings of the Quran in Arabic from each of the ten schools. However, for sort of, I don't know exactly the particular details of this, but the ten Karats became the 14 Karats. And you now today have over 30 different recitations of the Quran in Arabic. And they differ, differ in thousands of places. And I've just given you one, Quran 10.16. Haf says he would not have made it known to you. Kumbul says he would have made it t- known to you. That's not a difference in dialect. That's a difference in text. The texts read completely differently. What's the verse number once again? Uh, Quran 10.16. 10.16. Um, some of the differences are legal differences between the different Qurans, um, which which puzzle me. Um, Quran 2, chapter 2, al Bakra, verse 184. Um, there's a difference between the Hafs and the Wash. And I believe that Al-Tabari, as well as others, go with the Wash. They disagree with the, the Hafs which is by far the most popular Quran today. Um, It talks about a person who has to miss religious duties, such as you miss your prayers and fastings during during Ramadan, for instance. And it says that you can make up for those at a different time in Surah 2, verse 184. But Hafs reads Misakin, sorry, Hafs reads Miskin in Arabic, where you feed a poor man but Wash and other Qurans read Masakin Masakin I think I've pronounced Masakin which is poor people so it's not just one you don't feed one person as a way of penitence if you miss your prayers your fasting during Ramadan for instance you know if a person is in the Saudi Arabian military 
and you have a very important right. job to do, um, you, you know, you can't be expected to go without food and water in the hot Saudi Arabian desert if you have an important job to do. You're flying a jet or something. So you might have to break your Ramadan fast. Well, according to Hafs, you feed one poor person, Miss Keen, at Surah 2184, but in Warsh, it's Miss Akeen. So you feed several poor people. And, and there's, there's thousands of differences in this between the Arabic text of the different Qurans, which really puzzle me. So regarding this miskin and masakin, there within the jurisprudence of the faith, that's where... We obviously we have the Quran to be the main source. Then yes. we have supporting sources. Yes, but there's different versions, versions of the Quran. And also, yes, the jurists who have studied and thereafter they have concluded with certain verdicts. So regarding this... But there's different the schools of jurisprudence. There's different Sorry? schools. There are different schools of That's jurisprudence right. in both Sunni and Shia Islam. They don't agree. They disagree right. with each other. Yeah. So... You, you know, there are different Qurans in Arabic which say different things in Arabic. The, the Quran text differs between the various different versions of the Quran. And I've given you an example of Hafs and Warsh dis yeah, disagreeing. Look, it's not the fact that it's, it's actually the Quran differs. There are certain words that are pronounced, that are recited differently. But by and large, the Quran text is more or less the same. You said by and large, which means it's not the same. There are differences. Because you said by and well, large. That's what I said. There are, there are certain words that are pronounced that are pronounced differently. No, no. And no, no, they're yeah. not pronounced differently. Hafs says you feed a poor man if you have to miss certain of your religious duties during Ramadan. But the war says, right, well, Miss Akeen, you feed poor people in the plural. You don't feed one person, you feed several people. Right. So. The compensation here, the way that it's understood through jurisprudence, is that for one fast that's missed, you either feed one person for 60 days, or you can feed 60 people for one day. Which school of jurisprudence is that? This is generally the Hanafi school. Right, that's a popular school, but there are other schools which differ. Sure. Why should I? Why should I accept that? You know, it's just, it's just something that men have invented. The original text that you base your faith on differs. The half says one thing. The war says something differently. At Quran two one eight four, and there are over thirty different versions of the Quran, and they read differently all over the place. Why should I trust it? That's the choice of your faith. You well, know, I don't have any faith in the Quran. Why should I have point. faith in it? Why should I have faith in it when even Muslims themselves can't agree as to what the Quran actually says? And, and, and the earliest Qurans differ from the modern Qurans. If you go back to the earliest Quranic documents that we, we have, um, they don't read the same as the modern Qurans. There's thousands more differences between the earliest Quranic manuscripts and the modern ones, such as the Hafs and the Warish. So what did you say your name was? Robert? Robert, yes, yes. Okay. Robert, this is going to take a further discussion. Yes. And I do have a meeting coming up. Yes. So what I'll do is that I'll get back to you. Yes, sure. And hopefully we can speak further on this. Yes, absolutely. And maybe even schedule something where we can meet up and probably meet in person. Well, it'll be a long journey for you to travel down to Plymouth, but fine. Okay. So then it'll probably have to be over the phone. Yes, yes, fine. Yes. I, I mean, let me just give you one example. Have you heard of the Sana Palimpsest? Say that again. Have you heard of the Sana Palimpsest? The Sana Palimpsest? Yes. 
No. No. It's the world's oldest Quran. It was found in the Grand Mosque of Yemen at Sana'a in, in Yemen in 1972. It was examined by German scholars in 1975. They microfilmed it, but they weren't allowed to take the photographs out of the country until the 1990s. Um, it differs from the modern Qurans. I'll give you one example. Um, the Hafs, also known as the 1924 Cairo edition, says, So travel freely, O disbelievers, throughout the land during four months, but know that you, that's the second person plural, cannot escape Allah and that Allah will disgrace the disbelievers. The San of Palimpsest reads similar, but instead of you it's they, which is third person plural, and after escape Allah it adds the words and his prophet, which were le left out of the modern Qurans. So it says, so travel freely, O disbelievers, throughout the land during four months, but know that they do not escape Allah, here's the addition, and his prophet, and that Allah will, escape, and Allah will disgrace the disbelievers. I'm just kind of puzzled because, you know, why should I trust a modern Quran when it disagrees with the Arabic text of the ancient Qurans? Have to have a, a deeper discussion on okay. this. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.